and the Canadian Grand Prix is go! Max Verstappen's got a good start, so is Lewis Hamilton straight up to second position, past Fernando Alonso he goes, watch Ocon trying to improve as well now, can he get to the inside of the Haas? Verstappen, then Hamilton, Russell trying to outdrag Fernando Alonso, who's fighting the car as he gets on the power, this will be close for third place as we go into turn three, Alonso loses a position, it is Verstappen, then Hamilton, then Alonso, will they all fight their way through? It's a position game for Ocon, he did make it up to fifth place. Perez in the thick of it as well in the midfield on those hard tyres, but the gainer there is Hamilton, got great traction off the line on his mediums and just got the drive down the inside of Alonso. There was nothing the Spaniard could do about Lewis Hamilton getting to second place and he did well actually to keep Russell back. Ferrari and a Red Bull, that's Sainz and Perez. Sainz trying to go around the outside, does he have the room? Oh, it's a miracle he made that corner, but he went over the kerb and that gives the place back to Sergio Perez. Still they go wheel to wheel, bad attraction off the corner, oh and into the wall, into the wall goes Magnussen who has to rejoin and he finds himself dropping down, doesn't look to be damaged but he's lost a place to the home favourite. And this was the move for Carlos Sainz, trying to improve past and he did get past the Red Bull as avoiding action taken by the house of Kevin Magnussen. Stop the car, park the car, park the to Marshall Post, critical message. Logan Sargent out of the Grand Prix. We see the move from Piastri on Hulkenberg. I love nice. a bit of that. Nice move from the Australian rookie to the inside, and the crowd loved it. Oh, George Russell has hit the barrier. This front wing further back down the racetrack, and Russell, in this gaggle of the top four, has made contact with the wall on the exit of nine. Got a right rear puncture. He's obviously got the front wing hanging off. He might be able to get that round to the uh, to the pits. And there's a safety car as well now. So Verstappen, Hamilton, Alonso in the pits for the stops. Let's just check it's the same order. Pressure on the crews here. That's why they practice all the time. Hamilton was tight ahead of Alonso. Alonso hand off the steering wheel. So he goes into eight. We're heading to nine now. This is the moment. He said over the curb. Yeah, he launched it over the curb. Unsettled the rear end and then lost the car and uh, was pitched oh, rear smack into the wall. I'd be amazed if he's not done the suspension there as well. Ooh, oh, it's tight. It's on the limit. Caution, caution. You've you just ahead, just ahead. Break up with something, guys. I think that'll be all right. That's okay. I have to break on the pit. You had to break there, yeah. It looked pretty dangerous to me. This is going to be Lando Norris backing it up, and he's building a gap because at that stage of the race, his teammate was ahead of him and he dropped back too far. Norris given that five second penalty. This is going to be on board with Lando Norris. We're heading down to turn 10. It's the hairpin. Is he just going to launch one? Look at this from miles back to take the place from his teammate. And is that a problem for Bottas? Either way, he can't keep the place. We're drooling in the background as well. Albon had a run. Off the road goes Oscar Piastri. He rejoins correctly, but his momentum will be slowed. And there's an opportunity now. There's a place gain for Alexander Albon, who's up to 11th. OK, Kev, we need to drop a place back behind Ocon. We need to drop back behind Ocon. So safety car, pit lane, exit, infringement. OK. So that message, first of all to Bottas, then to Magnussen, and a positions regained for Esteban Ocon, sorted out nicely by the teams. And the two drivers who had to let Ocon through, and suddenly Bottas absolutely torches past the Haas. Yeah, that was a good opportunistic move then from, uh, from Bottas. He's going to have to defend into the next corner. They're all really, really close and bunched up now. On board with Norris, looking at the pair of them in the McLaren. There's on much better tyres oh. yeah, around the outside. Does he have the room? Oh, that's magnificent from Lando Norris. Oh, all the way around the outside of the house of Kevin Magnussen. Now, this is one of the best opportunities he's had all race long. Does he dive to the inside? Fernando Alonso fights his way through, gets past Lewis Hamilton and takes second place, but it's not done yet, and he knows it. He's looking in the left-hand mirror because Hamilton's trying to retake it. The two old masters wheel to wheel, and Alonso takes second place. Here's Nick De Vries. Here's Nick De Vries with the pass to the inside. Can he get it slowed down? Oh, they're close to banging wheels. Does that open the door for George Russell to fight his way by? And after a tough moment earlier on, Magnussen and De Vries still going at it. Lock up and contact again. They're banging wheels in both corners, and how do they get out of this one? Yellow flag is out in the first sector of the racetrack after two wheel banging moments in a couple of corners.
So then De Vries goes to the inside, and then it's just quite rude from De Vries trying to usher K Mag wide at turn two. So dirty on the inside line, they just couldn't get the car stopped. K Mag then couldn't turn in because there was an Alpha Tauri there. And look, he just has to turn out in the end. Sergio Perez trying to rescue another Sunday for the third race in a row, but at this track you can overtake, and he's proving it once again. It's a pass for Sergio Perez. I think we're in for some classic Albon defending. You got the straight line speed. That's a nice cheer for Alex Albon. They know what he can do at Williams. He's had some decent points finishes from getting his elbows out and just defending as hard as he can. Oh, Russell in the Mercedes finds himself being passed by the gaggle of cars. And what's the issue for the British driver? So we think we're going to have to retire this car. Front left brake wear is too high. Out of them, late lunge, really late lunge for Lando Norris, who's done it again. Does he have the momentum to take the place? Oh, Norris is so late on the brakes into the hairpin, but Valtteri Bottas will try to fight back. Finally, someone is able to force a move in this battle. Upper place for the moment goes Norris to P9, wheel to wheel into the final chicane, but it's Norris later on the brakes. It's Norris going through, and that's a fine way to get past. I almost knocked myself out on that curb. <laughs> You know he's relaxed when he's laughing about this moment over the curve. The rear wing is loose on the LP. It's going to fall off at some point. I think it's pretty dangerous. Understood, we're on it. Now that is looser than you'd want on the rear of the car. What that is from Lando Norris is an appeal to get the black and orange flag being waved at the Alpine, but that is an unusual sight. For Red Bull, though, a journey that began in 2005 will see a crowning moment in 2023. Max Verstappen wins the Canadian Grand Prix to give Red Bull their 100th victory in Formula One. And now it's Mercedes, Williams, McLaren and Ferrari, members of the 100 Victory Club. Alonso has come home in second place. Hamilton completes the podium in P3. But it's wheel to wheel all the way to the end. The McLaren and the Alpine, will they have any room? Norris bails out of it, and what a defensive drive from Alexander Elben, who gets his best finish of the season, and just his second point scoring result over the line we go, and Lance Stroll finds his way past Valtteri Bottas over the line, they'll both be in the points though, Stroll P9 at the end. And Verstappen with an enormous lead in the World Championship now. As he matches Ayrton Senna's win total today, he chases his championship total by the end of the year.